He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And nobody gets to the Father except through Him. So if you are in Christ, guess what? He is your way. He is your truth. He is your way to heaven. And that's all there is to it. Uh, we're going to be in the book of James. We're going to start going through the study of the book of James. Uh, today we'll we'll just uh, be briefly in James, uh, maybe just, just to get an introdu introduction to who James is, uh, establish his authority, um, and then we go in, the, probably next week we'll delve into more of his teachings and stuff like that. So uh, we just want to establish who James is before we get going, because it's always nice to know a little bit of historical background, I think, anyway. <clears throat> it is for me, so <clears throat> I know where, where it's going to, where it's coming from, and things like that. So, <clears throat> let's just pray <clears throat> this morning, and we'll delve into this and uh, see how long it takes to get through some of this stuff. So, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this morning, and <clears throat> I pray, God, that you'll just give me a voice. And I pray, Lord God, that you'll just open our hearts and our minds to receive your word this morning. Thank you for the apostles. Uh, thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, the prophets. Thank you for just everything you've given us, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that what we learn, we would put into our heart and we learn to apply it to our life. And so I, I pray, Lord God, to give us wisdom and understanding this morning as we read and as we hear. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, <clears throat> I want to start in the book of James. The book of James is really good material from basically a practical standpoint okay it's a good from a practical standpoint it's more of a it's, it's more like a pastor's letter uh, and so it gives some really good instruction on how to live and I think as we look at uh, how we should live in James's message that um, obviously with things going on around the world we'll be able to relate into our culture uh, when he opens up the scriptures, basically he talks about the 12 tribes of Israel, you know, the ones that have been scattered. Um, and, but it really isn't just, though he might have been addressing the, the, the Christian Jewish folks, uh, there's a lot of application for the so-called us Gentiles too, right? Uh, and it's something to really live by, and it's something that I think that can give us a lot of... Uh, uh, a wisdom and instruction so that we can live the best we can according to the word that God gives us. I mean, that's our goal, isn't it? I mean, uh, in the world that's dying, our, our goal is always to live as, as uh, best we can for Christ, to be an example for others so we can lead people into the kingdom, right? And, and to uh, let people see Christ in us. Uh, because, you know, uh, uh, most of us, I would consider in here, most of us are pretty mature Christians, you know. Um, and we know the Word, and, and we hear the Word. And so, uh, hopefully, you're applying the Word. And so, the people that come into your sphere, into your world, um, uh, they, you have influence to them. Not over them, you have influence to them, right? We, we never want to be lording over. We want to bring them in. <laughs> And, and so you're going to have contact with people that I don't. And I will have contact with people that you don't. Um, and so I think what we need to be doing is living a life that is glorifying God because you might be the only book that people read. Um, and uh, without embarrassing anybody that's in here today, um, I was making a comment. I'm not going to name names. They'll know who I'm talking about. Um, but somebody who had an influence over somebody's life and uh, they um, presented the gospel by the way they lived. I don't know what they said, but they were an influence to this person. And uh, uh, then we're going to talk about it a little bit in, in, in church or uh, during the service. And that is, you know, we're going to talk about the carnal Christian and, and what a carnal Christian is, what a righteous spiritual Christian looks like. Uh, but uh, being the book that people read, the influence that you can have to someone is leading them into Christ. So this person was talking to someone 
And uh, so somebody came and they invited him into church. They came to church and I went and met with them on Friday and they gave the life to Jesus Christ. And his first words was, when do I get baptized? So we'll have a baptism next week. You know, that's the kind of influence that you have to somebody when you live for Christ, when you live for the gospel. Uh, that's our goal, right? Uh, you know me, I'm not afraid to speak the truth, expose lies. You know, that's just who I am. And uh, I want the truth to be told and the truth to be seen. I want the lies to be exposed because the gospel is just too important. Uh, because th I think the most important thing and the most important job any of us can have is to be an example of Christ to others. I mean, there's nothing more important in this life because we can attain things, we can grab things, we can get good jobs, we can go to school, we can... Uh, achieve many things here on, on this planet, but at the end of life, where does that get you? It got you some nice things on earth for maybe 40 years, right? Because you got to grow up before you can start making a living and stuff like that. And that's what, uh, you know, Solomon in, in Ecclesiastes was saying. And, and when you first open Ecclesiastes, you think it's kind of a depressing book. Anybody know how Ecclesiastes opens? Yeah, meaningless, meaningless, you know. It's like everything in life is just absolutely meaningless, you know. It's kind of depressing because, you know, you kind of read, you know. It's like, it, it is the truth. It's truth. He, and basically his point, he's looking back on his life, everything that he's done, and he's kind of failed at the end of his life a little bit, and, and he looks back on his life, and he, uh, he looks back and he goes, you know, what did I accomplish? All those things I pursued, all the things that I built, all the, all the things, what did that accomplish? Nothing, it's all meaningless except what you do for God. That, that's, that's, that's it. The most important thing you do is live for God. Because, it's, you know, like the Bible says, what? It's appointed unto man, what? To die, and then judgment, right? So we stand before Christ. And, and the Bible's true. It says, every knee will bow, every tongue confess, Jesus Christ is Lord. And so, so we need to be this example of, of, of being who we say we are. And not just at church, but when we leave here, you know, that we're authentic, that we're true, that we're living what we say we believe. We don't just do it on Sunday morning, but we do it when we're all alone. We do it when people are around us. We do it when we're out in public, okay? And that we be this example so people can see us and see, can see Christ in us and lead them in, into the kingdom. And so the book of James really kind of opens this up to us, you know, how we should live. Uh, it's, a, it's kind of a nurturing, in a way, uh, a book to 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 nurture us into the kingdom to how to live uh, and so uh, it's just just down to earth really kind of a a pastoral um, epistle if you will a writing okay uh, and so there there are some controversies a little bit about the book of James um, it, it as as always sometimes if you go back and you start studying some of the books and the scriptures and stuff and you'll come across different scholars that have that, that struggle with um, not the writings so much, but the dating of them, when they were written, how they were written, who, was they, who were they written by. And James is, is kind of one of those such books. Uh, uh, some believe that it was actually written by James. Others believe that it was written um, by th things he left behind. The, name, the book is named James, after James, but written by somebody else. But uh, you, you'll always have some of that controversy. Uh, what we can guarantee is that we know that, that James, we'll see this in just a minute, that James was an apostle, okay? He wasn't one of the original disciples, okay? Well, one of the, the 12, and I'll show you here in just a minute, so be ready to flip through some scriptures just so I can give you an introduction to James and who James is. Uh, but he, uh, as Paul mentions, that he was actually visited, uh, you know, or, or came, Christ came to him like Christ a, appeared to uh, Paul on the road to Damascus. And what's the requirement to being an apostle? Anybody know? To be trained by Christ and be, in, yeah, be exposed to Jesus himself. And that's why I have a problem with uh, 
people call themselves apostles, right? Um, and so to be an apostle, you had to be literally trained or have an experience in, in, by, by Christ himself, okay? Uh, so since the establishment then of the, of the early church, uh, James is often associated with uh, James, the brother of Jesus, okay? Uh, and you would see this in, in Mark 6.3. I'm not going to turn to those two scriptures, but you can write them down if you want to. Mark 6.3 and Matthew 13.55, okay? Uh, the book is attributed also to James, um, not one of the 12 disciples, but uh, turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter, let's see, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, and I'll show you this. Look in verse 7. This is a, affirmed by Paul, and this is how we know we can establish him as, as an apostle. Uh, somebody read verse 7. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Okay. Okay, who is he? Christ, right? Who did he appear to? Okay, after that, he was seen by James and then by uh, all the apostles. So there's a, apostles. Then the last of all, he was seen by me also as by one born out uh, of due time. Uh, and then Paul says that, it goes on here and he says that I am least of the apostles. Okay, um, was, was Paul one of the original 12? Mm -mm. Was he? Okay, uh, and so Paul came, came later, and so Paul writes some, I don't know, 14 books of the Old Testament. Okay, so we know that James is, is an apostle. Uh, he's associated, also identified as, um, uh, as one of their first apostles. Uh, that's in Galatians 1.19 uh, and, and 2.9. Uh, okay, so you can go look those up. Uh, and then we can compare, also you can compare Acts 15. Uh, 13 and, and Acts 21, 18. Okay, so uh, in the time of James, he became uh, the prominent leader among the, many of the Christians in Jerusalem, the early church. Uh, and as we can see, we can, we can establish him as apostle of Jesus Christ. And so when we, when we can see, and the reason we establish this is because when we read James, we can establish his writing, the epistle, as what? Uh, it has authority, okay? It has authority. What's that? Or somebody that knew, yes. Okay, but it's authentic. <clears throat> okay, and, and uh, so we can, we can know that the scriptures that we read, and that's why it's important, I think, to establish those uh, who have written each book or um, who they are so we can see the authority that they have in order to apply the scriptures to our to our life stuff like that so uh, look at the very opening of James uh, we'll get into just the very first verse here and it just says that James a bond servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad Okay, and the 12 tribes are who? Yeah, probably writing to Christian believers, but you know, the book can be applied to anybody who believes. Uh, the book, you know, is also a call uh, to those who don't believe in a lot of ways. A lot of the scriptures are like that, right? To call people into the kingdom. Do we have people today that are just walking around non believers? Yeah, we got a lot, don't we? You know, and so. Our call is to go into the world and preach the gospel. Okay, uh, now how is the gospel going to be received in our world today? It's true, but look in our culture, right? Our culture, because that's what we know. But we could get into Israel, we could get into Middle East, because they say one of the fastest growing churches right now is in Iran. Believe it or not, Iran of all places. You think it would be America that we'd still be, you know, America is on a decline, okay? And so that's why I kind of, when I talk about that, I think about kind of our culture. How does it affect, because that's what affects us immediately. Now, obviously world events, Israel, Middle East, all that affects us too, right? I mean, it's all part of it. But for the sake of, of this particular study, uh, we are in this culture in this time around these people. So how are people in our culture going to receive the gospel reject it yeah um they're gonna I, I gave that a little we're gonna sing the song this morning uh 
to the world, to the non-believing world, the message of Jesus Christ and the cross and the resurrection is what? It's foolish. It's foolish to, to the world. It's foolishness. We're, 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 like, we're like the fools. They look at us like, you guys are, are just idiots, you know, believing that stuff. Um, I remember preaching to some, you know, talking to some people about the gospel when I was over in China. And they'd look at me, and Meng Li one day was just looking at me. I was just talking to him. He's president of the company, and, and I was just telling him about Christ, you know. And I could see the look on his face. He spoke pretty good English. Uh, I could see the look on his face. It's like, can you really believe that? <laughs> you know? But I don't know I, where he is today. That was a long time ago. So maybe it planted a seed. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. We'll see. But um, you probably said the same about, history, you? about who? About his religion. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that says a lot about other religions, doesn't it? Other faiths. Anything that's, you go back to... Uh, John 14, 6. Okay. Um, so anyway, it, it appears that he's addressing the, the, to the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, and just for a little preface in history, how do we get to the 12? Who are the 12 tribes of Israel? Abraham's sons. Say again? Abraham's sons. Uh-huh. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob's name is changed to what? <clears throat> after he wrestles with Jake, uh, after Jacob wrestles with God of the Jabbok River, right? And, uh, and then uh, uh, he changes his name to Israel, and then we get the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? And uh, we know the, if you know the history, remember the history, uh, you have to get in First and Second Kings or Second Kings, and, and you, well, Chronicles also, but uh, you, you start looking at Jeroboam and Rehoboam, you see the split in the, in the nations, two tribes go south, 10 tribes go north, they get, the, the 10 tribes get defeated by the Syrian army, and then they got all dispersed, and then the, the two tribes get uh, eventually of Judah, Judah. Uh, the two tribes that go south, by the way, are, are Judah and Benjamin. Benjamin kind of gets sucked up into Judah, uh, but there's, there's two tribes that go, that go south. This is just a history lesson, okay, just to get us here. Um, and, and then uh, eventually, what does Judah do? They disobey, you know, the 10 tribes disobey, they get dispersed. And Judah, what happens to them? We're talking, we're talking about in Daniel. Going off to uh, Babylonian captivity, right? Uh, I'm reading an interesting couple of interesting books. Uh, I'm reading uh, two books on uh, the fall of Babylon. It's pretty interesting. They're pretty interesting books. But the, the interesting about the books is one book is written before, while Saddam Hussein is still in power. So that's the perspective. Now we know the rest of history, what happened to Saddam Hussein, right? But this book is before that, you know, before his fall. And so it's a really, really interesting perspective. And the reason I like to read some of those older books is because you can read the history behind it and what was going on. Do you know that he was working on rebuilding some of the uh, uh, temples and some of the things uh, at the time? Uh, but anyway, we got the rest of that history. But the whole idea is, is that when we look at history, when we look at people in the Bible, we look at the books, how do we know and can we establish the authority of, the, of those books? And so that's all I'm trying to do with James today is say, okay, when we read James, you can read it with that it has the authority, okay? An apostle, he is uh, uh, definitely addressing uh, the tribes of Israel, but he's also addressing anybody else that is a believer, and it's very applicable to us, okay? Um, so James, um, again, I said this already, uh, uh, it, the book may or may not have been written by James. It could have been written, some people think maybe it was written um, a little later by somebody else under his name, uh, but uh, uh, the accuracy is, is still authoritative and it's still part of the original canon of the Bible, so we can take that uh, for what it's worth, okay? So he is a bond servant. So what I wanna do right now is um, I'm not gonna get into all of my notes that I have here today. I wanna save them for next week uh, to really delve into things because uh, I'm gonna do something that I used to do in the past. I kinda got out of the habit of this. I'm gonna try and do this for the book of James. 
Uh, and what I did is I established, uh, uh, as, I, as I write these and I get the bullet points down, to establish and give to you these handouts with little blanks that you can fill in so you can have the information. And then when I'm all done with, the, with this, then I, I put this into booklet format and uh, I keep all the videos that we do for James. So we have the instructional videos. You'll have all the fill-in sheets. And then at the end of the study, we'll have a booklet. If you want the booklet with all my notes, you'll have that as well. So you can go back and you can study the book of James and follow along with what we've talked about. Let's just, we'll, we'll, uh, let me introduce you to the text. And then next week, what we'll do, if you want to read ahead, we'll be in uh, uh, just verses 1 through 4 next week. So I'll just introduce them to you today, and then we can uh, come back to those, and I'll give you all the other notes and stuff that go along with it next week. Okay, so uh, verse 2 through 4, it says, um, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Okay, so there's a lot just packed into that that I'm going to extract out of those four verses. First is, uh, if you want trials, pray for what? Patience. Patience. Endurance. 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 Well, isn't endurance the same? No, endurance is a different word. But don't you have to, yeah, have, you know, it's like working out, you know. It's like, you know, anybody like to work out? Anybody like to run and work out with weights? And David's crazy, he kind of does, you know, it's like, I used to when I was his age. I don't anymore. Wait till you get older. Maybe you still like it, I don't know, but uh, I don't like doing it anymore. It's hard work. It's not fun, you know, uh, and, but I do it because I know it's good for the body, you know, so I, I do it anyway. Um, and so uh, the reason I do it is because that endurance, that patience, you know, uh, if you keep working at something, you keep working at it. And, and same thing with what, he ta what we'll talk about next week is, you know, count it, joy when you find, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Now, how many people want to go through a trial? Nobody does. And remember, I always said you're in one of three places. Does anybody remember what, I, what I've said? You're in one of three places at all times. What's that? Yeah, you, you're, you're getting ready to go into a trial. You're in the trial or you're coming out of one. Because as soon as you come out of one, there's going to be another one. Right? It's just life. So count it all joy when you enter into different various trials. Why? Because going through the trial produces patience. Okay? And, um, and, and what, what does that mean? Patience and what? It means patience that you're trusting in God. Okay? I don't know where the outcome of this. I really don't like going through this. And yet, if we're patient and we allow God to work, guess what? In verse 4, uh, but let all patience have its perfect work, okay? That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So trials perfect us. It makes us, hopefully, for those who are truly in Christ, it makes us rely on God even more. Because when you're going through the trial, it's hard to see the, tri the trees through the forest, right? Nobody likes it. You know, nobody wants to go through the trial. I don't like trials. You know, I don't like difficulties. You know, can we just, can it all just be easy? You know, can't we just, why do I got to have so many trials? And then there's these trials that you'll have. I'll, I'll talk, expand more of this next week. There's trials that you have that, uh, one, are trials or troubles that we bring on ourselves, right? Now I know I've never done that to myself. I know I'm perfect. You know it's hard to be humble when you're perfect, type of thing. But sometimes we bring it on ourselves. The other, the other trials is, is sometimes God just allows a trial to build you, right? He'll just test. You know, sometimes it's the testing of our faith. So He will allow us to go through certain things to build us. And then there's those trials where <clears throat> other people bring them into your life and you didn't ask for it. You have any of those? You, you have, you have. <laughs> Let the marriage counseling begin. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, but isn't it true? You know, you, you're just humming along, humming along, and all of a sudden somebody throws a wrench in your works, you know, in your life. And you weren't looking for it, you weren't trying, you know, and it just finds you, you know. And so, uh, so you have these three areas where we will be tested. But 
and, and then not only that, <laughs> if I can say it, and I think I can say it in this group here, when other people throw things in uh, your life, the wrench in your life that just kind of spirals you out of control, um, government can do the same thing, right? And uh, you're just trying to live your life. I, 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 you know, I just tell my wife all the time, can't you just leave me alone, let me live my life? You know, I'm going along, going along, all of a sudden I get a letter in the mailbox from the IRS. Now, this didn't happen. This was a couple of years ago, but I mean, I didn't get one this year, but you know, I'm always, I'm always kind of like, okay, did I do my taxes right? You know, and, and so you're always kind of looking over your shoulder and they make you feel like you've done something wrong when all you're trying to do is be honest, you know? It's like, and it's just life, you know? And so we, we got to get through this life. The important thing that in the trial, no matter how it comes into your life, we allow it to work in our life to build us, to make us stronger. And we do that by getting on our knees and say, okay, good Lord, I don't understand this. Please help me get through this trial. And uh, then when you get ready to go to the next one, you do the same thing. You get on your knees, okay? Um, now the world, when the world goes through trials, they curse God, right? They curse God because they, they don't understand. And a lot of people don't want to come to know Christ because why does God let bad things happen to good people? Why is there so much evil? in the world. You know, um, <clears throat> why does God condemn people to hell? Well, God doesn't. And the reason you have trials, you're not trusting God. Why do we go to hell? Because of our own doing, right? We condemn ourselves. okay? And so, uh, but the world, you know, when we talk like this, this is foolishness to the world, and so the world doesn't understand, okay? So, what, I, what I'll do next week is um, I'm going to talk about there's not going to be any pleasure and pain, uh, and then I'm going to give five purposes uh, on why we're here on earth. You've heard me talk about these before, uh, and then how, and I'll give you scriptures to back all that up uh, so that you can say, okay, here are the five reasons that, that we even exist. This is five reasons the church exists, you know, um, and there's going to be areas in your life you do pretty good and there's going to be other areas in your life where, man I really struggle over here I, and I just can't kick it you know so there's going to be areas that you struggle so um, I think it's going to be a good study hopefully encouraging uh, and uh, it'll hopefully give us uh, uh, encouragement through difficult times that I think we're facing in this world uh, so anyway that's all I have for today uh, short and sweet okay I just wanted to establish James first just so when we dive into it next week, we have that background, stuff like that. Uh, let's pray. Lord, thank you for this morning. Uh, thank you for all that are here. I pray, Jesus, that you'll just be with us as we go into the service this morning. We worship you and we sing songs and we hear your message. I pray, Lord God, we leave here a little bit different than when we came in. And whatever people are dealing with today, I pray, God, you just bless them. Uh, and as we read through this, this book, I pray, Lord Jesus, you'll just... Uh, um, Lord, give us understanding and give us encouragement to, to, to live in a world that just seems to be dying uh, and uh, the difficulties we face. Uh, we pray, God, today for Israel. We pray, Lord Jesus, for the Middle East. And we pray, God, for all those that are uh, still the captives. And there's just so much going on in the world. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you'll help us and our leaders to get back to support Israel again. And, and I pray, Lord Jesus, that uh, when we honor you and your people that you've chosen, even though they're an unbeliever, believing Jews, but when we do things your way, I know that we are a blessed nation. So Lord, bless us today, bless the service, and bless our time, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, and nobody gets to the Father except through him. So if you are in Christ, guess what? He is your way, he is your truth, he is your way to heaven, and that's all there is to it.